Welcome back to Nickelodeon's Comic Corner, Nickelodeon's Classic, Non Classic. This is episode 2637. And episode 24, 2531. Uh, first up, we have is The Man Thing by Steve Gerber, The Complete Collection, Volume 2, which contains from the Man Thing book issues 9 through 18, all five giant sized Man Things one shots. Along with Daredevil 130, 113, and 14, most of which is a crossover with Man Thing, uh, and Monsters Unleashed 8 through 9. Yep. So, what is the book? Now, by the way, we have Steve Gerber with Mike Plong, Anta Kowalski, Lynn Wein, and Marvel Pope in the writing. Mike Plong does also artwork with Bob Brown, John Bushma, Alfredo Aquila. Rico Rival, Ed Hannigan, Jim Mooney, Pat Broderick, Ron Wilson, and Tom Sutton. The uh, back front cover is Mike Plogg and Veronica Nietzsche. Back cover is Frank Berner and Avalon Mattia. Yep. So, the first thing we have in here is Giant Size Man Thing. Yep. Giant Size Man Thing number one. That is the first book published in this trade. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that the fact they put this thing first. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly put in the case of this one is just Man Thing taking on the glob. Yes, the glob, one of his arch and what well, well, it's a character first popped up in the pages of Hulk, for some reason, he, he appears here. He, of course, previously appeared in Incredible Hulk 129. He later returns to Incredible Hulk 197, 198. Yeah, and his appearance has been very sporadic ever since then. But, yeah, as a rematch with him in this issue here. Yep. Really fun book. A lot of sci-fi stuff here. And then we have the two Daredevil issues. Daredevil 113 and 114. Which are kind of discussed issues already. Which thinking, why in the world would Marvel include these two issues in here? Well, because basically Steve Gerber wrote them. Of course he did. And for some reason he decided not to include Master Kung Fu number 19. I'm not sure why. Mostly put, it's basically that the story continues in the pages of, well, Kenny's Fennec issue. It's quick, It's a quick two-part that leads into his next appearance, which be in Giant Size Man Thing number two. Yep. That is the very next thing he appears in. Or it's mostly put, just Man Thing goes crazy. Yep. And like, that's pretty much the story for that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we have a guest appearance by Tony Stark. Yep, who's here as himself, not as Iron Man. And then what's next? Man Thing number nine takes on a demon in this issue. Yep. And then, like, right after issue nine, it's basically on to... After taking on the demon in issue number ten... And then takes on the Demons of Libertarian. Yeah. Basically a group of terrorists. Issue 12 is just basically the first appearance of Brian Lazarus. Who is a one-shot character. Just by a writer. It's most of a lot of really, really good. Uh, it's basically him just doing something about Man-Thing. And issue number 13, we debut of a character called Captain Fate, who is a recurring character, which after this very issue, he'll appear in the very next issue of the book, and then he'll appear in the very next volume for the book for about a few issues. Mm -hmm. Moving over to Giant Ass Man Thing number three. <laughs> a world he never made with the opinions of Jennifer Kale to take on Kronos the Wizard and Mordok the Usurper. 
yeah, it just basically like a third dimension. Which, after this issue, he later appeared in the final two issues of Man Thing Volume 2, Volume 1, excuse me, and that was it. After this giant size book, his next appearance will be in Man Thing 15. Or a woman named Saint Cloud visits, visits uh, Citrusville. It's just mostly put just a one shot issue. Then moving on to 16. Where you have him take out the Mad Viking. Who appears in the very next issue. All about book burning in that issue. Yes, freaking book burning. And moving on to the giant size man thing number four. Where you have this, takes these other, take out this family in this giant size book. Over this one person who just passed away. Yeah, the emotions. It's a really interesting book. Nothing really bad per se with this one. And it's back to Man Thing for book burning. For issue 17. 18. Chaos the camp as Mad Viking gets killed off in issue 18 after three appearances. And then the very next thing is, is the final giant sized Man Thing. Apparently, like, Fear of Time 3 is the first chronological appearance of Man Thing. It is most of what takes place before the events of Savage Tales number one. That's what the opening story is. There's also a story with, with, with Howard the Duck. He actually is in the uh, last story for the book, which that leads to his solo book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really fun book, basically, the giant size man thing. Mm -hmm. And then finally, Capital Issue 19, where he takes on a creature known as a scavenger. Who appears not only in this issue, but he appears throughout the main issues of the book. But that's issue 19. I'll discuss more about it later. But yeah, that's okay. But that's not te technically done yet, per se. There is also Monsters Unleashed. Yeah, he also appears in Monster Unleashed in a couple short stories in this book for issues 8 and 9. That's only also discuss here. Now, what is the stories in this book? Well, it's just a two-part story about a guy named Christopher Dale who tries all about the story of Man-Thing for a couple issues. Yeah, that's most of what it is. It's very interesting what it is. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much the book in a nutshell. Good book, roughly a... Give it 9 out of 10. It's really good. Next up is Excalibur. Yeah, so if I get the book to come up here. Yeah, now we're starting Warner Bros. is very strange run per se. He, he he this is a guy who's a fan of three parters. We have Excalibur Visionaries by Warren Ellis. Uh, volume 1, which contains some Excalibur issues 83 to 90. Yep. That is mostly put exactly what this is. Uh, first up, we have the Soul Sword Trilogy, which is a three-part storyline that involves Kitty Pryker hands on Ilya Rasputin's sword. And also Wolverine appears in the storyline for a reason. She's and also... It's kind of a very strange storyline, per se. And then, like, we have them go to Genosha for an issue. You think this anything to do with Sigenda? Not really. Just basically, they go to Genosha for an issue. And then, basically, we have it where in issue 87... Yeah. 
Actually, more than a cup more than one issue. It's like basically like three straight issues of this, two issues, of that, and then we have the Dead Nails trilogy, which takes up basically issues eighty eight to ninety, and that's it. It's mostly put trying to start a relationship with Kitty Pride and Pete Wisdom. Yeah, it is by far one of the most strangest things basically Warren Ellis has done with the book, but that's pretty much it. You could say it's like not a lot of that worthy stuff here. Uh, basically, he co-does the book with um, Scott Lobdell and Famous Seas. All worked by Terry Dodson, Bill Sienkiewicz, Derek Gross, Ken Lash, used those works very day. Larry Stroman, Jeff Moy, Dave Williams, Mike Muller, uh, Mike Christian, and Chris Pacchio. Uh Bill Sienkiewicz also has some inking, too. Yeah, so, well, that's one down, two more to go. Uh, very strange start for this run for Warren Ellis, but we'll talk more about this one. This run is not very long. It's only like 21 issues. Like, it is rough like just about two years for Excalibur, and then we're back to the Epic Collections for the book. Yep, yeah. uh, I'm going to give this Excalibur book roughly a 9 out of 10. It would be nice to it. Uh, it's like, really? Yeah. Warren Ellis seems like he has been every book in the 90s. He was on this book. He's been on Thor, Doctor Strange. Uh, nothing against Warren Ellis. It's just that, okay. It's like, you read this book at this point, like, I kind of miss what Chris Kemmel was in the book. That book was, ever, was amazing. This is not terrible, per se. The only problem with this is also is this website. Oh, it does have all three volumes. Good. So, um, give the book roughly a 9 out of 10. It's It's got good artwork. Uh, this movie long looks slightly. Yep. But I think with the... I think in just... I think by volume 3 is when basically we're going to get Passage 100. And then after my finish volume 3, it's back to the Epic Collections to finish up this volume. And then basically go through the second volume for the series. Yep, but what about the third volume, you might ask? Well, that's something else altogether. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, thinking, really? Yes, really. Yeah, in the case of next volume, there's only like three trades. Mm-hmm. And... Basically, when I finish this volume, and of course, next volume, there's only a couple more series to review of Excalibur, and that's it. And I just Excalibur Volume 3 and New Excalibur, and that's pretty much it. Yep. But yeah, that's good. pretty much a particular view. Uh, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications, and do not hit the dislike button. Next up, more Eminence and Shadow. Okay, next view. Bye.